That's what's so beautiful about this. Pursue peace with all people. That's such an action statement, isn't it? Pursue, it's like a uh, Matt Damon movie, man. I'm supposed to pursue it. I'm supposed to chase it down and pursue peace with them and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. So it's not just you that gets defiled when you're holding on to this bitter root. It's concentric circles of the people around you that are close to you because it tilts your decisions. And it tilts what you tell your kids how they should handle other people in the family at the wedding. We don't talk to them. I mean, there's some Italian weddings that takes eight hours to figure out the seating arrangement because of who talks to who. And nobody even, I'm Italian. That's why I'm saying Italian, okay? I'm not, you know, I'm saying it about my own family. Is that like nobody remembers what the fight was about? It was 40 years ago. They're still holding that grudge. How good is it? All right, Romans 12, 18. If it's possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. So look, if pursue peace wasn't good enough, here it is. If possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably. So that means I can only handle my half of the equation. If I've got a problem with somebody else and I've tried everything I can to work that out, then I could still just say, to the Lord, show me what's the next thing you want me to do. Even though they're totally rejecting me, they won't return my phone calls, they change their phone number. You know, however they're rejecting your attempt, sometimes the attempt alone is enough to, to break it down because they're, they can't hold on forever. They're realizing, man, I can't keep holding on to saying I got to just, let's just talk and clear the air and, and, get, and move forward. Let's call a truce and let's just move forward. Because, you know, it's very, very stressful to, to not be in right relationship with people, especially because of how God wired us. And then he says in 19, do not avenge yourselves. Bitter judgment in some way is a form of trying to avenge yourself. So be careful about that. But rather give place to wrath for it's written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. This could be at work. I, I find this a lot, that there's lots of drama on the job. Anybody with drama on the job? <laughs> lots of hands going up very quickly. Didn't take long. And you get into a problem with somebody, and the justice part of you wants to report them to human resources. <laughs> or the other thing is, I'm going to send an email, and it's going to be all caps. You know what that means. You're shouting in the email, right? So we've really, a long time here, we've been telling people, 24-hour rule. You can write the email, but don't hit send. And it's amazing the next day when you go in and you look at what you wrote the day before, after you've had a night to sleep on, and go, oh, my God. I'm so glad I go to that church and they told me not to hit send. Because <laughs> you end up making the problem worse, because now whatever the original problem was, the new problem is your email. See what happens? This is a total attack of the, den of the devil, and he gets you hijacked. He, he hijacks your emotions, and when you do things out of that emotional place, bad problem, isn't it? Okay, so that's what he said. Don't avenge yourselves. And I'm not saying that certain things on the job shouldn't be reported, but pray. Make sure you're hearing the Lord about whether you're doing the right thing or not. Because if it is a big problem, you're not the only person who's facing this issue. Okay, so you might not have to be the one that calls it out, but maybe you are the one. So I'm not saying ignore it. Just don't let your emotions be the thing that rules it. Let it be the Lord because you pray. Yes. How are we doing on time here? I gotta look. Eight, Eight, okay. The law of judgment applies not only to our conscious actions, known and performed outwardly, but also to what is lodged in our heart and repressed, unknown and unexpressed. So that's a tricky one. Because I can't think of anything, of any reason why I would be having this bitter root. Well, you know, things happen to you as a child that you don't remember, but they're still lodged in there. And if you had a father who was promising you to come to the game, let's say, and didn't come to the game, you start to get this expectancy, like, I, I hope he doesn't even tell me he's coming because I get so disappointed when he doesn't come. Right? That's lodged in the heart, and it's unexpressed, and it's my, many times just forgotten. And the forgotten part could be that it hurts too much to try to remember it. And in this class, sometimes memories will come up that you would almost like try to block it and say, oh, man, you know, I want, I want to be whole, but it hurts too much to remember 
how I was treated or remember what that thing was that I was going through. And, and that's why the prayer is so important at the end and why you have to picture Jesus going back into that place with you and walking through it with you because it's real. The pain is real. What, what happened to you was very hurtful. But if you just let it stay in there, it's just going to keep percolating more poison. That's Like you said, it's not expressed and known in our conscious mind, but it's in there. And it says, once formed, the judgments bring results. Bitter roots that are not brought to the cross will defile you and many others. Bitter roots may be the most powerful negative force in our lives, bringing destruction to us and those around us. Now, that's written by the Sanfords, who counseled for 40 years, right? So of all the topics that, you know, we cover, they're saying this could be one of the most toxic things. And partly it's because it's hidden. And, and we just ask you a general question. Like, is there ever a time that you're angry and you don't feel justified to be angry? <laughs> right? Of course you feel justified. I have a reason to be upset. Well, I, of course you do. You don't just make it up because you've got nothing better to do and you're bored. I think I'll be mad at somebody. It's just, are you going to allow that thing to hijack your emotions? Or are you going to try to rule your spirit? Right? Because it says in Proverbs that a man who doesn't rule his spirit is like a city with the walls broken down which means you're open to attack. All right, so this is why another really important reason we got to get to the roots. For us, roots are habitual ways that we drink nurture from God, others, ourselves, and, and nature. Now, that's a really kind of very Sanford kind of statement to make. Drinking nurture. When you think about a plant in the natural, the plant sinks down roots because it's pulling up the water that, you know, that capillary action that comes from the water underneath the ground, and it feeds this thing. So something's feeding us, and if it's bitter root, then it's that negative memory that we're holding on to that might not even be in our conscious mind, but it's that low self-image that we have. It's that, you know, we had a friend whose father was an alcoholic and called him stupid his whole life. You know, that was like the joke of the family. Meanwhile, you know, the guy went on to be very successful. He clearly was not stupid. But because the father had a problem with alcohol, he would just keep repeating this over and over. And of course, as a kid, it's your father. He's got a, an authoritative voice. And you're going to believe what he says. You start to believe that lie, right? So be careful that you got to forgive him, right? Because if, in that case, if that little boy judged his father, I hate him when he does that. Well, what, what law did he violate? Honor your mother and father that life may go well with you. Did he have a reason? Yes. Was it still a sin? Yes. Anybody want to leave at this point? Because really, no, it does. It feels really unfair that that would be the case, right? Like that little kid didn't know any better. But, but now that the Holy Spirit is in your life and you're a Christian, you have to take the next step and say, well, now that I know this, even though I don't think he was doing his best and he could have done a way better job, I have to do what they told me and believe that there was some pain in his life that caused that behavior, and I'm going to repent for the sin of judging my father. Very hard to do, but so important. Can't even tell you how important it is. Sometimes with the Word of God, you just have to do it out of obedience. And there's just some amazing cleansing thing that happens. Over the years, now 20, 20 years we've been doing this. I can't tell you how many times people did this kind of mechanically, even angry with us, because we would say, okay, we'll help you pray. Just repeat after me. And when they got to the part about I forgive them, they were like choking on the words because it's just hard to do. It's, you feel like you're letting them off the hook. And they owe me, and they owe me an apology. I shouldn't have to apologize. And that's true, they do. But you can't let that shut you down. And, and especially with parents, but it's not just parents, right? It could be a lot of other people that you were counting on. You know, the point that Manny said, I was counting on you and you let me down. Yep. And have you let anybody down in your life? You know, hopefully not intentionally, but yes, of course we have, right? So in, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Judge not, lest ye be judged, and the same measure you mete out will be meted back to you, <laughs> measured back to you. So that's that sowing and reaping process, right? If you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive. The key for us when we first saw this material was that we didn't recognize that we had sinned by judging our parents or anybody in authority over us because it felt like we were justified to make that judgment. But especially with parents, because it's not conditional, you have to break, uh, you have to ask the Lord to forgive you of the sin of judging them and that 
it's amazing. It just frees up all kinds of baggage in your life. 